My name is Kevin Rudd and I'm here with a group of forgotten Australians and former child migrants who are here in Brisbane Southside and we are celebrating, I think it's fair to say, your third anniversary of the apology to this wonderful group of Australians. And all I can say on behalf of this terrific group of, um, of human beings is this, they are fantastic survivors. See you folks. <laughs> Friends, one and all, let me begin by acknowledging the first Australians on whose land we meet and whose cultures we celebrate as the oldest continuing cultures in human history. Uh, this is a special day. Uh, we're honouring the third anniversary of an apology to the forgotten Australians, an apology which was just too long in coming but an apology which we nonetheless finally delivered. And it was my privilege and honour then as your Prime Minister to have been the person delivering it to you all. It's worth for a moment just reflecting on some of those words. I said three years ago we come together today to deal with an ugly chapter in our nation's history. And we come together today to offer our nation's apology. To say to you, the forgotten Australians and those who were sent to our shores as children without your consent, that we are sorry. Sorry that as children you were taken from our families and placed in institutions where you were so often abused. Sorry for the physical suffering, the emotional starvation and the cold absence of love, tenderness and care. Sorry for the tragedy of lost childhoods. Childhoods spent instead in austere and authoritarian places where names were replaced by numbers, spontaneous play by regimented torture and routine. The joy of learning by the repetitive drudgery of menial work. Sorry for all these injustices to you as children who were placed in our care. As a nation, we must now reflect on those who did not receive proper care. We look back with shame that many of you were left cold, hungry and alone, and with nowhere to hide and nobody to whom to turn. We look back with shame that many of these little ones who were entrusted to institutions and to foster homes instead were abused physically, humiliated cruelly and violated sexually. We look back with shame at those with power who were allowed to abuse those who had no power. And how then, if this was not injury enough, you were left ill-prepared for life outside, left to fend for yourselves, often unable to read or write, to struggle alone with no friends and with no family. For these failures to offer proper care to the powerless, the voiceless and the most vulnerable, we say sorry. These were hard words to say, but much harder for those who had to hear and to receive them. Much harder for those who had to receive them and to accept them. To offer an apology is one thing, to have that apology accepted is something else. People often thank me for delivering this apology. You betcha. That was a small thing. The much bigger thing is this, that you had it in your hearts, given what you have been through, to accept that apology. That is a much bigger thing. And that is a tribute to each and every one of you and the tens of thousands like you across this land of ours, Australia. I've just been with some friends here to look at the exhibition of photographs next door. Some of you may have seen it. These photographs are, for me, stark reminders, graphic illustrations, of the pain etched in people's faces and the places themselves which cause such pain. 
As someone said to me just now, look at where this place, this institution, Neocol, is located. Literally in the middle of nowhere. No place to go, no place to hide, no place to run. Sentenced to be there without recourse to kindness, to care, or to justice. When I think of my own childhood and I reflect on yours, I can only feel even greater sadness for what you have been through. Mine was not a perfect childhood. We grew up, after my father died, very much, if not on, close near to the wrong side of the tracks. Like you, I had some experience of uh, the uncertainty of not knowing where to call home for a short time in my life. So for each one of you, to the extent that it is useful to you three years on, all I can say is, every time I meet you, every time I'm embraced by you, every time I hear your personal stories, I am again humbled. For the future, can I say to each and every one of you, you are survivors. To survive requires phenomenal strength. To survive not just in your bodies, but to survive also in your minds and to survive also in your spirits. These are no small things. It requires enormous guts, grit and determination to do that. So, as a group, as a family of forgotten Australians, together you inspire me. Whenever I feel as if I've had a tough day in politics, and I've had a few. Don't we know it? <laughs> you may have seen one or two reports in the newspaper. Scar tissue is still there. I hope you've still got one shot left in the locker. <laughs> then what someone like myself has been through in public life pales into its significance compared with what each one of you have been through in your private lives. Uh, there are ups and downs in our nation's political life. There are governments come and there are governments go. Prime ministers come and prime ministers go. But with each and every one of you, with each and every one of you, this has been a gritty story of human determination, perseverance, and triumph. You should be so proud of that, each and every one of you. Many of the rest of us would have just fallen by the wayside. You didn't. You survived, you picked yourself up, you dusted yourself off, and off you went. It takes a lot of guts to do that. It takes a lot of guts to do that. And if you can do that, you can do anything. That's my message to you. If you can come through all of that, you can come through anything. And in so doing, you become an inspiration to the nation. I know that the journey is a long one and a hard one. And if I know anything about life, and now I know a little bit, is that no one's life is an even climb. There are bumps, there are holes in the road, and sometimes there are forks in the road where we may disappear down the wrong track for a bit. Everyone's life is like that, if we're honest about it. And your lives, given what you've had to put up with, you've been through more of that than most of the rest of us put together. But you know something? The destination is one of continuing recovery, restoration, and rebuilding. Nothing in this life is perfect. Nothing at all. You might see people who stand up on television who may not say it directly, but who have this subtitle 
invisibly scripted underneath their picture saying, well, I'm pretty perfect. There's an ancient Australian phrase which deals with that. And that ancient Australian phrase is bullshit. <laughs> no one's life's like that. No one at all. And therefore, our job as fellow members of the human family, and as fellow members of this community of people here in this part of Brisbane, is to be here as sisters and brothers in solidarity with you. It can be in small things, it can be in great things. It can be in what uh, is said to you by way of a kind word of encouragement. It can be through something practical like providing a job. Solidarity is important. Because if people are honest about it in their own lives, that there are times in which we all need the solidarity of others. So my friends, you the forgotten Australian, you the army of survivors, uh, you the uh, inspiration and admonition of us all, I honour you. You are fantastic folks. You are people equipped with a strength of spirit which has something strong to contribute to the Australian nation. And you have a contribution to make to our country's future. Stay with the path to recovery. Whenever there are bumps in the road, know that there are smooth paths which lie beyond. Stick at it. The apology was not for nothing. The apology was about new beginnings. And you've embarked on those new beginnings. I thank you. Thank you.